here at my current ribbon storage, which is okay. They are dowels that are suspended from hooks on the um, exposed ceiling in my basement craft room. And although they work all right, I have to deal with dust and um, them unraveling every once in a while, and it's not the best solution for me. So today I'm going to show you how you can make your very own ribbon shelf. And we're going to start with a piece of foam core and I have marked uh, six inches on each side and I have just used my straight edge to uh, measure and mark it out and draw some thick lines and these little X's in the corner are parts we're going to cut away and what I did to determine the six inch width on my shelves was to just basically um, take my widest ribbon roll and measure it and um, so we got six inches and also having it that wide will make it a little less tippy than if we had it uh, thinner to just accommodate thinner rolls. So what we're going to do is take an X-Acto knife and cut through the foam core, but I'm going to cut um, just through the top paper backing, the foam in the middle, but I'm not going to cut through the backing on the back here because I want to be able to hinge, keep all of the pieces hinged together. Foam core is wonderful for craft projects. It is very sturdy and um, it's great to make crafting accessories for your craft room. And here we go. Just going to slice through the top two layers. Try to keep it up against your straight edge if you can. Hope this is in frame. And when I get to the end where I have the, um, the X area, I'm actually going to cut all the way through that, but I'm going to get all my sides cut first. I buy my foam core in large boxes of uh, 25 sheets of 32 inches by 40 inches. That's the size I'm using here. You can go to the dollar store and buy smaller sheets of foam core. It might be a little bit easier to work with. Or you can buy the larger sheets at any large craft supply store. This one's going to be a little hard to reach. So again, I'm just cutting through the um, top paper and the middle foam, and I'm not cutting all the way through to the back paper, because I want to keep that attached. It'll just make our box a little sturdier and a little easier to work with. Instead of use, instead of having four loose pieces, we're just going to have one piece that has um, hinged edges. It'll make sense once we get the whole thing together. Alright, and I cut all my, oh, I've cut all my sides. Alright, then I just got a little self-healing mat here. I got the dollar store in the kitchen section, and I'm going to cut out my corner pieces. And we'll use these later to reinforce our shelves. It cuts very easily. If you do find that you have a hard time cutting this, you can use a um, hot knife, like if you have a wood burner. A lot of times they come with a little knife attachment, and that will kind of melt the foam as you're cutting, so it just makes it a little, little easier. Especially if you have to cut anything on a curve. We're, we're just cutting straight lines today. But if you did have something that had to be cut on a curve, you would want to have the, um, the hot knife adapter on a wood burner. That's so much easier. All right, see how easy the little corners cut out? You're also going to need a hot glue gun. And I've got mine all plugged in and ready to go. It's good to have an extension cord on your glue gun. Um, when you're working on a large project, because you may need to stretch and reach, and um, it's a lot different than when you're just sitting at your craft table. I'm really hoping this uh, video is in frame so you can see what I'm doing here, or it's not going to make any sense. Okay. One more corner to cut out. is this. Now this is going to be the back of our box. When I flip it over, I'm just going to fold up on the sides where I cut. Gosh, I hope this is in frame. <laughs> Oops, you know what? I did forget to cut a side. I thought I thought it only cut these sides. Ah, there we go. We're just scoring through the top two layers on this one. I thought I already did this, so don't mind me. There we are. Okay, so we're just going to fold up on our scored 
cut. It's just like if you were going to make a card and you score your lines first to make it fold easier. Basically what we're doing here, look how easy. Oh my goodness, it's so easy. I was thinking I was going to have to have my husband make me something out of wood to hold my ribbon, but gosh, this works so much easier. Now I am simply going to hot glue at the corners. And I have this set on low. Low will be just fine. Don't worry if you get a little sloppy with your glue. No one's going to notice after you have it filled with your beautiful ribbon. And you can add a little more glue later to reinforce. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to cut these down and actually stick those in some of the corners. Or even use them as, you know, full size. That's really going to add a lot of strength to our box. And honestly, when we're making something so quick and easy, um, can't go wrong. We've got a little lovely background noise here. The, uh, Dehumidifier has kicked on. I'm telling you, we've had the rainiest spring in Maine that I can remember. Oh my word, we haven't seen the sun in like over a week. So the dehumidifier is pretty much running constantly in my craft basement. Oh my gosh, this is so easy. I can't believe how easy it is. I was wondering if I was going to be able to show this video at all or if it was not even going to work. But yay, it works. We'll glue we'll, we'll both of these sides at once because we're going to Press them both together at once. I don't want to move there anyway. Whoa! I'm going to hold it till it sets. Don't worry, you can pull off any erroneous glue strands when you're done. And there we've got the basis of our wooden shelf. So the next step will be to cut some doily, uh, doilies, dowels, and um, really it's going to be easy. While we're at it, we can reinforce our corners just by taking the squares we cut, putting glue on the marked up side, because that's not pretty, we don't want to show that, and sticking them right in our corners. That will make it nice and strong. Do that for each of the corners. Okay, your dowels that you can use for this project, you can get at the hardware store and they come in 48 inch lengths. This is what I have all these ribbons strung on that I was hanging on the ceiling. And what you'll need to do is saw them in half. So you've got two 24 inch lengths, see? And um, what I use to do that is one of these little jobbies. I think it's called a coping saw. I'm not exactly 100% sure. I found it in my husband's workshop. so. Look in your husband's workshop and you'll probably find something that looks like this. Or your dad's workshop or your neighbor's, you know, find a little doohickey like this and it will easily cut through your dowels in like two seconds. And um, to make the holes in your box, what I did is I took my straight edge, my yardstick, and I measured three inches from the back and I made a line. And then I measured, I made a little notch on the line every four inches, so at four, eight, 12, 16, and so on and so forth. And then I took my crocodile, and I'm using the big bite because it has a long reach. If you don't have one, um, you could probably use a drill or poke a pencil through there or something, and that will work too to give you your places where to punch. All right, so we've measured three inches from the edge of our box, and we've made a line. And we've made little notches on that line every four inches, so four, eight, 12, 16, and so on and so forth. And now we're going to use our crocodile or a pencil or anything you can poke a hole with basically to punch holes on the marks that we made. For the larger dowels, which is about a half inch, I think I put four holes close together. And for the smaller dowels, I used um, probably about three holes really close together. And um, it's pretty easy to figure out where the hole is going to come out. And I'm just going to do three because I've got a three eight inch dowel I'm using. Um, if you're going to the hardware store to buy these, buy them all the same size. I'm just making do with what I have in my craft area. So, you know, if you're doing this from scratch, get them all the same size. Now, after this is all together, I'm actually going to paint my dowels white just to make them look a little more uniform. And here, see, so you just slide it through. Now, it's up to you whether you keep the long ends or not. But see, what I do with my scraps of ribbon is I have these large binder rings I bought at Staples or you can get them any off supply shop. And then by color, I organize my scraps of ribbon. I wind them around a little bobbin or a little tag, anything 
that you know you can punch a hole in and then hang from the ribbon, and then um, hang from the ring, and then I'm going to hang these on the ends so that I've got my ribbon scraps ready to use and within reach as well. Because before I had them hanging up really high as well, and I just didn't use them that much. So there I'll have them all ready to go within arm's reach. So continue on putting dowels into your box, and we'll be back in a few minutes to see the finished product. Okay, here we have the finished shelf with all the ribbon put on it. Um, I'm very pleased with the way it turned out. I've got them organized in rainbow order. Uh, the top couple rows have my oranges and greens and um, blues. And as we work down, I have my creams on the next to the bottom shelf, and then my blacks and whites, and then some larger rolls.